In this video, we're going to be working on an Xbox One S. I already disassembled the motherboard. Customer said that he may have spilled liquid on it, and now when he tries to power the console on, it goes on for a second, and then it shuts back off. So power on and off, on and off. It's not going on. So right now, we have a power issue with the board. Something is probably shorting out on the board, causing the console to shut right off. We're going to do physical inspection and see if liquid came in contact with any components on the board. So we're going to start from the far edge here. Liquid almost always resides on the edges of a board. Okay, I do see some signs of liquid here. So something must be wrong in this area of the board, right there. So this is not good. We can reflow, maybe this is not making a good connection, or maybe there is a short somewhere, or maybe the chip itself is not good. And we do not know the condition of this resistor here. It's about a 2 ohm resistor, 2.20. Let me quickly test for a short and see if we have a short on this capacitor. Meter in diode mode and we do not have a short. What about the resistor? What's the value? The value on the meter is showing as 2.6, which is good. So even though the resistor looks bad, it's good. A bad resistor will increase in value or it will read oh well. It will be open circuit. Whereas a capacitor, it will short out. Where this and this will be like a line. So uh, we do not know the condition of this chip. Let me just finish off with the physical inspection. Anything else? Okay, I see corrosion on this chip. Look at this. We may have to resolder this chip, take it out, clean the pads, and resolder it, or we may even have to change the chip. Same thing goes for the other one. Let's continue with the physical inspection. Anything else? The rest of the board looks clean for the most part, unless there's something else. And this is the CPU, the thermal paste. And this is thermal paste. Okay, so nothing on back of the board. Let's focus on this area that's damaged by liquid. We do not have a short on the capacitor. The resistor is testing good, so it's possible that we have a bad chip. Or maybe the connections, because of the corrosion, they're not making a good connection with the pads. Let me desolder it quick. We're going to clean up under it. And we solder the chip back. We're going to do the same thing with the other chip. If, after we do this, we still have the same issue, then we may have to replace both chips. We do not know which one is good or which one is bad. Let's go ahead and clean up this mess. And now let's solder that chip back, get rid of the glare, so everything is nice and clear. And 
pin number one should be on the bottom here. So I have two syringes of flux here. As people may be wondering, how come flux was white when you first used it and now it's clear? I have two syringes, whichever one I grab first is the one I use. This is uh, Amtec 559, the one I'm using now. Okay, so this looks good. Assuming the chip is in a good working condition, we do not know that. We use the same unleaded solder that's currently on the board. All we have to do is test and hope for the best. That's the only obvious thing that I see wrong with this motherboard. I'm gonna give this to Big Boss to test and we'll see. Big Boss tried it and same problem. Right after you power it on, it shuts back off. So what I did did not fix the problem. Now I have a donor board here. If you look, I have it labeled with an X. So we're going to take those components of this donor board and put them on this board and hopefully we can get this Xbox One S to work. It could be that one of the chips has damage because of obvious liquid damage on the actual chips. I'm going to remove this one. We're gonna remove this one, we do not need it. And we're gonna also remove the other one, if I can find it. This one here. This one had liquid damage on it. And pins were corroded, so it's possible that this chip is not good. And anything else? Okay, so we're going to start by replacing this chip. Whatever this chip does, I do not care what it does. It had corrosion on it, so I'm changing it. We're going to remove the chip from here. And we're going to solder it on the customer's board. This one is done. And we always need
Okay, so everything is looking like new. Let's try one more time. Big Boss assembled the console and he left. So I'm gonna test this on the bench here. Plugged in. And let's see, will it power on? Before, as soon as you hit the power button, it would power back off. So, yes, it's spinning. It's working. Awesome. What I want to do is try to connect it to the monitor here. I'm going to use the HDMI cable from the microscope. I do not want to go to the other bench. And it's not seeing a signal out of range HDMI. Why? So we have another issue with the console. And that's why in yesterday's video I said that sometimes the device takes longer than usual to repair because of other issues that may occur. Look at this. I mean, it's perfectly on. Look at the console. It's on. The fan is spinning. Everything is on, but I'm not able to get a signal on the screen. Uh, I'm going to have to work on this again tomorrow. Right now it's time to go home. 6.37. Uh, I wish this would have worked. Then it would have been a happy ending for the day. But at least we got the console to turn on. I'm thinking maybe I'm going to try changing the retimer chip tomorrow and see if that will solve the problem. From experience, retimer chips on Xbox One S is never the problem. But uh, right now I have reason to believe that it could be the retimer chip, the HDMI controller chip. I'm going to take a look at the HDMI port quick to see if it looks good. Look at this, it looks in excellent condition. HDMI port is good. I do not think there's anything wrong with the screen here. I'm gonna try it on the other monitor just to make sure. Uh, I just fixed an iPad Pro 12.9 inch. It's fully functional now, still charging. And I also fixed an iPad 12.9 inch. This is the third gen. It was not powering on. I did not do a video on it, but I should have. And this one is fully functional now. And I have a couple of more iPads on the bench here that I need to get done tomorrow. We have three of them here. And I also have a 12.9 inch that we need to work on right here. And a couple of more iPads here. So all those iPads are scheduled for tomorrow. And nothing, no signal, no signal. All right, that's it. What can you do? What can you do?